Okay, Paul Hover here. I'm going to talk about EMTT, extracorporeal magnetotransduction therapy. So it's this wand here, which has a magnetic coil that goes through it. First things first, if you're safe to go into an MRI scanner, you can have this treatment, okay? If you've got pacemaker, cochlear implants, anything with batteries, importantly, any credit cards or any kind of cards with a chip, don't put it near this. No Apple Watches, no phones, it will cancel those things quicker than you can say EMTT. So, here we've got the settings. Um, I tend to treat on level eight, eight hertz, and 4,000 shocks per treatment. This is pretty much standardized. However, some people find it a bit painful, and therefore, we have to think about the way in which we use it. So, what we do, first of all, is consider what this is used for. So the, the highlight, if you like, the headline factors are reduce inflammation and reduce pain. It does it really very quickly. I consider ENTT to be something that, um, this was explained to me by one of the, the top guys, Luca Gerdesmeyer, who's done most of the research on this, is that our ionic channels in our cells, so we've got sodium, potassium, exchanging places in a cell. If you put EMTT over your body, those cell, those ionic channels open up and allow that exchange to take place, whereas in injured cells, perhaps that isn't working at its optimal level. So if you imagine your old laptop that's got really, really slow, what we can do is reboot that by switching it off and then switching it back on again, and we get a bit extra speed from it. EMTT kind of works exactly the same as that, reboots everything, which is why it makes sense to me, and I can't back this up with science, but it makes sense to me that you would use this before, for example, using Focus Shockwave. Let's open the cell up, let's optimize the cell, let's reduce a bit of sensation, let's reduce a bit of inflammation, then we come in with our um, extracorporeal shockwave therapy, ESWT, and we can treat the pathology. Most studies, or all studies that have combined them, have shown an improved result through using both together. Now, you don't really feel this so much. Certainly, I don't find anybody that feels this in the knee or the ankle at all, even if there's diffuse swelling. But you may well feel it uh, around the shoulder, almost certainly around the anterior hip, and very often um, over the sacroiliac joints. Why? We don't know. But it's quite a nice thing to scan the body while this is on and see where areas are, are feeling a bit painful. It's interesting for the patient. However, some patients say, well, I can't feel it. It doesn't feel like it's doing anything. You may have seen this little trick before, but a loop of basic paper clips. We switch the machine on and we can show the power and the energy of the EMTT by the way the energy arcs off that ring of paper clips. And once your patient sees the, the sheer energy force that's coming out of this EMTT, it makes them understand. It makes them feel like they're actually getting something done. And by scanning around the body, irrespective of where you're going to treat, means they can actually feel that energy. And for whatever reason, if you're treating a knee or an ankle, they just don't feel it. The same with ESWT. If, for example, your patient feels it and it's too much, and I've had that a few times, just drop the level down to maybe six. Then you can take the Hertz up to 10. It's a faster treatment, but that is much, much more manageable for them. So higher Hertz, lower energy level, and the patient tends to not feel it. And then you can kind of titrate that up as the treatment goes on. So you can use this anywhere on the body. Don't recommend putting it on the face because it hurts, especially if you've got a need for fillings or any fillings there, but pretty much shoulders, neck, right the way down, anywhere where your patient has pain or dysfunction. I think this is a great treatment. You can use it in isolation. It's my choice to use it before Focus Shockwave. And I believe that it fills that gap of time from when you start treatment to when shockwave therapy starts showing a result, 
it fills that time in terms of giving the patient some early signs of reduced pain, reduced inflammation, so they feel better. So you're optimizing the shockwave therapy treatment and you're giving them that therapeutic window where it's easier to do their exercises because you've reduced pain and inflammation. Hope that's helpful. EMTT, if you don't have one, I suggest you go get one.